Okay, so I guess this is the time to start. So before we ask our speaker to give a talk, let me introduce him a little bit to everybody. So first, um, welcome everyone to today's talk. The topic is uh, farming and I. This is the 10th talk of a series targeting to promote agrobiotechnology and enhance understanding of the potential applications of agricultural products. We hope the series will inspire international scholars, researchers, farmers, and business in the agricultural field, as well as the interested public. First, let me introduce our speaker today, Mr. McGill Lee Chang, who is raised in Hong Kong and migrated to Panama in 1972 to join his family farming business by running up to 1,200 hectares of petty wise. He is the co-founder of GLCH Incorporation in 1977 and has been chairing it. He has involved in reforestation of over 200,000 trees of timber of different species, both exotic and native. He is currently active in cattle farming, oil palm plantation, rice mill, grains distribution, finance on farming related operations, and nature conservation. So he is a real farmer and as well as a environmental conservative advocate. So in the following presentation, Farming and I, he is going to focused on the importance of farming and the essential interrelationship with mankind. So it is 5 a.m. in the morning in Bang, Panama. And I learned that Mikhail actually prepared a lot of slides so that we have to ask him to separate into two talks. So he will talk how read today and early next year, we will ask him to talk on the second part. Now, so now, without further delay, let's welcome McGill to the floor. So McGill, it's your time. Okay, thank you, Dr. Lam, for having invited me to join this program. Um, I'm also delighted to have this opportunity to share my uh, perceptions about farming. Are we okay? So today um, we are gonna share with all of you a topic about farming. With which I have been related since 50 years ago. Um, I'm going to have a presentation with the help of a PowerPoint. But this is the presentation, Farming and I. And I have divided the presentation into four main focuses. The first one is the social role of farming. The second one is the major challenges of farming. The third one is the, food, the waste of foods. And the last one is the life of farmers. So before we head on, I would like to have you invited to share a short video about farmer that takes about two minutes. The king may rule over land and sea. The Lord may live right royally. The soldier ride in pomp and pride. The sailor roam over ocean wide. But this or that, whatever befall, the farmer, he must feed them all. The writer thinks, the poet sings, the craftsman fashion wondrous things. The doctor heals, the lawyer pleads, the miner follows the precious leads. But this or that, whatever befall, 
the farmer, he must feed them all. The merchant, he may buy and sell. The teacher, do his duty well. But men may toil through busy days, or men may stroll through pleasant ways. From king to beggar, whatever befall, the farmer, he must feed them all. The farmer's trade is one of worth. He's partner with the sky and earth. He's partner with the sun and rain. And no man loses for his gain. And men may rise or men may fall. But the farmer, he must feed them all. God bless the man who sows the wheat, who finds us milk and fruit and meat. May his purse be heavy, his heart be light, his cattle and corn and all go right. God bless the seeds his hands let fall. For the farmer, he must feed us all. Well, as we um, could see in the video, which is a kind of poem, there are a lot of messages about farming. There's one universal truth that says farmers feed us all. We have no doubt about that. Um, another message that the ladies sent was, the farmer can have a heavy, a heavy purse. That's not totally true because farmers hardly can have a, a heavy purse. So farming uh, is, a, is a kind of passion. Yeah, all farmers have, have, have to do the job uh, having the passion to feed the world. Well, starting from a soya bean, which is the one of the main, one of the main sources of protein for the mankind since the very beginning of our civilization. But while, while farmers feed the world, but the majority end up by being indebted. Farmers generate a lot of economic activities. Well, starting from when they lease or buy the land, the seeds, the water, the chemicals, fertilizers, the labor infrastructure, machineries, gas, tires, equipment, logistics that include the uh, importation exportations and the domestic trans uh, transportations, storages, refrigerations, distributions, supermarkets, restaurants, tourism, hotels, marketing, industry, advertisement, finance, technology, and even the academic programs. So we can keep on and keep on and finally, we can find out that every single economic activities in this world is related to farming. Well, this is a map uh, that shows that the protein supply in, the, in, the, in different countries. Uh, we can see that most of the developed country are over supplied with proteins. But we, are, we can see another problem that is the distribution. There's still a lot of other countries that are not, they have not enough protein for their own citizens. So sharing is still a serious problem in our food chain. Well, it's so strange that in our mind, food is always present, but farmers are not. Farmer are not, they have no presence in our mind. And we have to know that two thirds of the world, the, of the world population is still living in the countryside to keep on producing food for the, for the rest of us. There are 570 million farms estimated in the world. If we could 
divide this this this, this among the farms uh, between the Canadian population, which is under 40 million. That means that every Canadian citizen can have 15 farms to run off. And there's 1 billion people working the farm global wise. And most of them are, 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 are migrants from other countries. Um, for instance, in America, uh, people who work in, in the Northern Americas, they come from Central America. Uh, in Asia, people go to work in Australia and New Zealand. And people from Africa, they go to work in European countries that are more developed. And it is, as I said at the beginning, that farmers hardly can have a heavy purse because farmers usually make a, a living of survival. Well, this is the truth that doctors help people and farmers feed all of us. The difference is, as I said, we have to, ver we have to be aware that farmer always have to be on duty, but the, but the hardly can be, can be fairly paid. But for me, farmers are the Olympic record holders because no matter how fast the world rotates and no matter how fast the population grows, farmers have always been able to solve the, the, the food problem. All we have been needed, farmers have been solving our necessities. Well, once in a while when I uh, talk to people, especially young people who are related to a farming family background, I can perceive that they don't feel easy about the family background. And that shows that, that reflects that uh, people don't feel fairly treated being a farmer. And to be sure, farmer is the first profession ever existed in the human history. So we have to be proud of the profession of being a farmer. But the life of a farmer is a life of devotion, a life of passion. Who, who should be a person with an enterprising mentality and tenacity. Who should focus on his duty without any recognitions. There will be no medals, no ribbons, no certifications. Farmer are person who are independent, innovative and automotive, automotive, uh, automotivating. Who should be on duty around the clock and still have to find his free time to do researches. And farmer should be very skillful in controlling what I call TEF, that is the timing, the emotion, and the finance. Timing is very crucial because farmer have to calculate uh, the best timing to start spreading the seeds in order to assure that when they have the harvest, the market will not be saturated, that the price can be, can be maintained in a certain level. Well, since there are a lot of ups and downs in farming activities or farming industry, uh, people have to be very skillful in controlling or managing our emotion and not to, be, not to get upset you know, uh, every time when there's a, a, a burden. The most critical issue for farming is the finance issue. Because different to commerce that has uh, turned over much faster. Farming doesn't offer turnover as far as other activities. In the best of the cases, when one is involved in vegetables and some kind of crops, uh, short-term crops, one can have uh, the turnover in a matter of three to six months. And if one is, is involved in uh, cattle farming, that takes you between six to, tw to 24 months. If one is having, is having coffee farm or oil palm, oil palm farm, it takes you three years to, to, to have the first harvest, another three years to, get to be 
to have the break-even point. And if someone is involved in a timber industry, that takes you 30 years to be paid back. So it is very difficult to deal with the finance. Well, there's a, a farm, I named it the Wonderland, the Wonder Farm, which is a supermarket. When one goes to a supermarket, one can see all the best products that come from every, every, everywhere from the world. And uh, all, are in, all are with air conditioning, very comfortable. We can buy the best we, we want to. And there's still people, they may, there may be still people who think that the, the farming producers come from a supermarket instead of coming from a farm. Well, in the, in the farm, when we go up to a farm, we don't see any, we don't, we don't see any conditioning. We see farm workers carrying loads of producers uh, from the plantations, which are far, which are usually far from where the trucks are, are, are parked to pick them up. We can see here that these workers are protected by a kind of uniform that includes a head, a scarf, a long sleeve dress, and even gloves. So these people carry, usually carry heavy loads because they are not paid daily. They are not paid by hour. They are paid by the weight of the products that they, that they bring out from the, from, the, from, the, from the plantations. And uh, we can see here, there are a lot of trails. The trail, those trails are not made by machineries. They have been cut out by, uh, by the workers who, 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 uh, who do the duty every day in the farm. So farmers cannot control the, the weight of the, of, the, of the producers, but they have to carry as, as much as they, as they can because it doesn't depend only on the physical capacity, but also the financial necessities. Because as we said, they are paid by the weight of the products they come up with. Well, farmers are those people who renounce the comfort offered by the city, by the cities. And they prefer to stay down and to have them exposed to, the, to different adversities. Let's say social adversity, financial adversity, climate uh, adversities. I had a friend who used to be a farm worker all his life. And once I asked him what had been the most difficult work in the farm that he had ever had. He said it was salt farm, salt. He says that salt farm usually are in the sea level where it's hot and humid. And the salt is very erosive to the human skin. So people have been very well protected from the sun, from the weather, uh, from, the, from, the, from the raw material. And when it rings, the, the, the floor gets sticky all over. It's very hard to make life from, uh, from, uh, from the salt, uh, from the salt farms. Well, now let's take a look at the challenges of farming, which for me is not limited to the farmers only, but it's a liability to all the community, all of us, including the consumers. Well, this is a picture a very tra a tra traditional picture. We can see a nice background of the, gra of the, of the grass and the cows are, uh, are grazing. Um, that's the way how the cattle are traditional raised. They, meet the, they need the grass to grow and we, we need the meat to feed ourselves. But when people, when consumers are demanding more meat, so the cows need more grass and the farmer need more land. And then we have to start deforestating, trees are cut and burned. 
and the air heats up automatically. Nowadays, in the, in the modern fit, uh, uh, cattle raising, you can, we can see no grass anymore. So all the cattle are being fitted. Here we can see the cattle are lying up, waiting for the turn to be fitted. And we can also see some trucks in the background going up and down to assure that the, the cattle are being fitted. So nowadays, farmers do not have to feed only the human being, but, only the cat, but also the cattle. As people are demanding more meat in quality and quantity, the way to raise cattle has been changing. Nowadays, a lot of livestock are being raised in a confined way. The traditional space that we need to raise a head of cattle is one hectare. That means 10,000 square meters. And that is approximately the size of a soccer field. And nowadays, we can, we can manage to handle one head of cattle in only, in only five square meters. That means in one hectare, we can handle up to 2,000, 2000 heads of cattle. So they don't have to walk. We don't allow them to walk because the more they walk, the, the tougher the meat is, and that won't make the consumer happy. So they have just to stand up to feed themselves and lay down to digest. And all the, the, all the other uh, job have to do will be done by the farm workers. Another issue of uh, challenging for the farming is less and less people are willing to do to work in a farm because they are not well paid. Why they are not well paid? Because the owner of the farms are not well paid. So if every if people work, for instance, in in cities like Hong Kong, people work in the financial area, they are well paid because the the company, the 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 the, own, the owners uh, ha, are well paid, so that's a, a, a an economic chain that passes the the income from one to another. This is a chart, a graph that shows the trend of the work the, the farm workers uh, in the last thirty years in the United States. So we can see that less and less people are willing to work in the farm. So people like to, to be more comfortable staying far from a farm and close to the city. But when, when people start going to the city, they, uh, they are generating a lot of social loads for the government starting from housing, from education, from public transportation, from education. So if people stay down in the farm, the society is getting more balanced in many ways. So students are starting to find uh, jobs in the farm when they are on location in order to fill up that uh, space in need to handle the farm jobs. Well, even though we have so many farms in the world, but most of them, uh, probably over 95% are family run. Well, that's very logical because when a farm is run by a family, um, the expenses have, are, are, are lowered and that would be more affordable to run the farm. Another issue is when the when the people run the 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 farms in in the fam with the with the family members, people can stay together as a family. So the 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 family relationship is is stronger, and the so society is getting more stable. And as a matter of fact, uh, the divorce rate in the in the countryside is much lower than in the cities. So that's one of the, the perks that provides farming for the human being. 
Well, the farmers, we never know when we're going to pay, but only when it's the harvest. So the payday is not every week, is not every month, is not every any, is not is only when you get have the harvest. So all it depends, right? Because as we said, if you are involved in timber in a timber business, you have to wait thirty years to be paid. And uh, usually, when you have your product delivered to the distributors or or the supermarket chains, you may not be paid right away. They turn your products into an, an account account collectible that will be honored in a matter of 30, 30 days or, or probably up to 360 days a year. So the financial issue is very stressful for farmers. Gonna move on, All right? Okay, here we go. I'm sorry about that. Uh, in many of the cases when the producers brought from the farm cannot uh, have a, have a market to saturate it. So many many of the producers, especially those those are perishable that cannot be stored for a long time, that cannot be frozen in a, in a, in a proper area. They just end up dumb, dumbed on the way to the market. So that's a total loss for the farmers. In the, in the global farming, we have another kind of challenges because time has, be, time has been getting more complex than ever. Well, during time of crisis, food is the most important issue for the human life, even more important uh, than, than the firearms and the weapons. We can see here those countries that are in purple, deep purple, light purple, they are, they are self-sufficient uh, self in the food supply. And as usual, we can see that the country in developing, in de in developing areas are still far from being self-sufficient. So again, that's a matter of distribution, not because we don't have enough food in the world. So for me, a culture of meat consumption is a culture of self-disruption for the human being. You see, we have two, 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 uh, we have two, uh, two, two heavier load to produce food, and uh, we we end up destroying the environment that ends up in a price that would be too high that we cannot afford to pay. Well, cattle raising is really a kind of matam farming because we can see in this chart and to, and to the surprise of many people, the quantity of matam emitted by the cattle is more, much more than the total of methane produced by all the cars together from all over the world. So if we consume more meat, we are, we are producing more damage to our world. Well, this is a map that shows up the, the global warming situation. Panama, where I have been living in the past 50 years, is a tropical country. But 50 years ago when I arrived, I used to live with a blanket because in Panama, we still have a lot of forest. And since some, since some years ago, I don't need to sleep with a blanket anymore. And nowadays I have to sleep with air conditioning. So I estimate that in the past 50 years, the temperature in Panama even with so, so much forest, the temperature has been raising at least five degrees and probably 10. That sounds too much and too exaggerated. But let's do some, well, let's do some calculations. In the best of cases, if the temperature in Panama has been raising 
uh, for five degrees. That means 0 0.1 degrees in every single year during the past 50 years. There's nothing that can be noticed by the human being. But on the long run, we can feel it, not only in the temperature, but only in the society and in the social combina uh, 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 the society where we're living in. Well, in this image, we can name it whatever we want to. We can, we can name it drought, we can name it flooding, we can name it erosion. So this is not a solution that may come up with only by the farmers. This is a collective uh, issue that we have to come up with a solution between all of us. All people in the world are liable to contribute to solve the problem of the, of the, of the environment. Well, farmers never stop working and the politicians don't either. So there are situations that have been affecting uh, many farmers that they cannot even start the harvesting. They have been working for months, for years, uh, taking care of the products, but before they're going to have to harvest, they are told that the market is down, so no more harvest. So that's a total loss again for the farmers. So whatever you want to do with this world, either to have more or less deforestation, um, this, this is still a collective liability because farmers on our own cannot do everything. We are just in between to serve people who need the food. So if we as a world want to want a greener world, we have to change our habit to deal with the food. We know to help and to improve the situation in general, we, we can help, everyone can help. It's never too late. Hopefully it's not too late. So we have to start shop, shopping smartly and modestly. We have to share. We have to be, we have, we have to be, we have to be more generous. We have to consume also respectfully. We have to store our food with more efficiency in order to avoid less food waste. And we have to change also our diet habit by consuming more vegetables. When we go to a restaurant, a buffet, a hotel, on the cruise ships, on the planes, we, can, we have a lot of food. And even almost at all the time, we have leftovers. So we have to consume more respectfully, considering those people who are in need of food. I remember once when I was invited by a friend to see uh, an installation of air catering. Air catering is, uh, is an operation to, to provide food for the airplanes, the, the passenger and in in different flights. So I, when, I was, when I was in the, in, well, the installation, I could see how organized the way how people prepare food. And they were sent in the carts to go under the plane taken away by the trucks they're waiting in the, in the dock. On the other side, a little bit further, there's another dock where the trucks coming in with the trays of the food that have been served to the passengers. I was so astonished that I could, I could uh, imagine that probably one third of the food are not, uh, had not been consumed by the passenger of, uh, on the flights. I could even see that there were trays that had not been touched completely. So food are being wasted in many ways. Well, it's better for us to, to be careful about the way how we consume the food because we eat first and pay later. And we find out at the end of the day, we are not capable to pay off the bill, we just cannot afford to settle a bill. So it's still time to take 
uh, at, to pay attention to this. There may be still people think that the natural resources never run out. They do. They have been running out already. Only hope is still wandering around that we can make use of it. So the world can change by the way how we consume our food and that starts changing from our diet, from our own, own, uh, from our own menu. So we can, we can start helping to restore the world by, by being more balanced. But that's uh, the food distribution balance, the social balance, the environmental balance. Here's to an another topic, another focus about farming, which is the food waste that puts the civilization of the human being in doubt. Well, usually farmers don't waste food. Farmers send the best products to the market and save what the worst. And the people who are the consumers usually are those overweighted. One hardly can see a farmer overweighted. He produces, he produces food. He has enough food, but he never, he can never be overweighted. So it's very irony that those who produce food are skinny and those who consume, consume food end up uh, wasting the food all over. So we have to be more respectful. Enough is enough for us. Don't take more than enough. Don't waste food. When we go to a fast food restaurant, we ask for a hamburger. So we offer to have an upgrade. And when we have a soft drink, we ask to have an upgrade. And then at the day of, at the end of the day, we found out that we cannot finish the meal and we have it dumped into the trash. So people that still, there are a lot of people in need and waiting for the food that we are throwing out in, onto the trash. Up to 40% of the food is calculated that end up in the trash, either food that grow or processed. 44% occur in our houses. And another 34% occur in different kinds of restaurants. So food, uh, food waste is still part of our, our habit that should be, should be uh, modified. In this graph, we can see that in developed countries like the, in North America and New Zealand and Australia, people are having food waste of up to 110 kilograms per person per year. That means nine kilograms of food per month. That is much more than those people in developing country may need for, uh, for the survival. It's so amazing for me that even in developing country like those in Latin America, Southeast Asia and in Africa, are still reporting food waste. That's something out of the imagination of, enemy, of many people. The food is supposed to be produced and sent to the, to the plate of every family. But sadly, they don't go to the plate of the people, they go to the trash. There are people who enjoy food, but there are people who treasure the food. And because the food, because food are not part of the life of many people in this world. Well, when we go to a restaurant, we know that the waiters, they earn minimum wages and they try to work overtime, they try to work on holidays, and they try to work better, have a better service in order to be gratified, to compensate the income, the low income. So how can we imagine that those people who serve us the food that we order in the restaurant, with those plates filled of food not being consumed, so that shows a very obvious unbalance of our society about food and about resources. 
So many food, a lot of food uh, just end up being dumped on the way to the market of different reasons. And we still have a difficulty to transfer this food to those people in developing country who are in need of food, urgent need of food. Well, during the year, we have different kind of days. We have days for the kids. We have Father's Day, Mother's Day, Professor's Day, Valentine's Day. But still, we have no any International Farmer's Day. Even though we are being fed daily by the farmers, they are not in, my, in our mind yet. So we have to, more, we have to be more conscious about uh, the, 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 the necessity of all the human beings that farmers are the one who produce food and feed us every day since the beginning of the civilization. That dates back to probably 20,000 years ago. Well, let's see a stunning figure of 800 million that represents over 20% of the world's population, which is dying. Well, actually 800 million represents just a little bit more than 10%, but that figures doubles and we can see a little bit later. There are a lot of people in the world who wake, who wake up in the morning with the stomach empty and with uncertainties. When they go to bed, the, the situation doesn't change. They go to bed with the stomach empty and without, without any hope for the day to come. Another 800 million people are dying also, but for a, reason, for a different reason, overweighted. And what they have is leftovers and medications. So this we can see very obviously that distribution is a huge problem in our society. Well, we can see that what we are doing is killing people and killing ourselves. We kill other people by taking the food away and we take too much food to kill ourselves. So that is a very hard to understand uh, situation, a very un understandable behavior of a human being. Every, everything matters, nothing's too little to be shared. There are, there are always people who appreciate uh, what they can be given, what, can, what, can, what they can be helped with food, with water, with anything that other people can afford to. Well, let's go to see the life of a farmer. As we said, it's a life of devotion. Farmers, they have more, a more spacious area to live. They live together with the family. They, they stay together every day. They have meals together every day. Not, not, not like in a city, people hardly meet each other. And then the happiness of the farmer uh, are ranked over the average of the human being. So that's a positive issue, even though they don't, they don't make much money. But in this image, as we, as we can see, there are, well, let's say 100 chickens, 200 chickens. Uh, put it $10 each, that's $2,000, right? So that's, that's not a huge amount of money to, to raise a family. Well, the, the, the farms are run by family members. They live together, they work together, they play together, and they stay together. So that's a very important element for the social stability that they're self-sufficient they don't need any huge governmental uh, subsidizes they can be self-sufficient to survive but not to make money well farmers always had for the future by backing up to basic and the duty is to comply to feed the world all the time. We can see here, the kids are very, uh, have, have a very simple life. 
they don't have any international school to attend. The ladies who don't have any shopping center to go. And people don't have to travel a long way by occupying uh, public transportations. So there's a life uh, of a kind of kind of isolation, but that's the world and the lifestyle of a farmer. So if, if people try to migrate to the cities, a problem, a huge problem will start to go to, to, to emerge because we have, we have a problem with the generation relate to take care of the farm. So we have to promote the idea of the importance of the farm in order to make the world being balanced. This is a picture take, uh, taken some 30 years ago when I went back to my home village and I could see that people or relatives of my age, even younger than me, look older than me and still farming in a very primitive way. And I told myself that I was lucky because I would have with another buffalo by that, by that time. This is another picture taken some 60 years ago, 65 years ago, probably, when I was a kid, as can be seen there. That's the wooden hut where we use, where we, were used to we used to live. And we have some vegetables grown just in front of the house. We also have some chicken, we have some ducks. So that's the way how farmers maintain our lives and send some of those to the, to the market. Well, the life of a farmer is, is very compromising, right? And when one starts to be a farmer, that's the beginning of forever. Well, we can see here there are some concepts and promises from presenting voluntarily to choose the farm as one's partner. I promise to give the best of myself without asking anything more than you can afford. I promise to be faithful for bad and for worse, for now and forever. And I promise to accomplish till death do we part. Just, just farming is just like a kind of marriage, a very intimate relationship. Well, here, as the, as the farmers say, if there, were, if there were no farmer, there was no food. If someone at a moment, in a certain moment, can turn off the switch of the pharma industry, the world will stop rotating. That's for true. So we have to, we have to be more conscious about the importance of the relationship between farmers and the consumers. Farmers usually are people who like nature they don't do anything harmful to the nature. So they don't ask more than the land can provide. So consumer have also have that mentality by not asking more than the nature can afford to come up with. But this is a chart that shows how the, farm, the farming business is doing in the United States things seem to be getting worse instead of getting better. These are the, these are the numbers of the bankruptcy file, uh, what is known as the famous chapter 12. Um, they are lucky because they have a bankruptcy policy. Um, in many, many countries, there, no, there are no bankruptcy policies. So the farmers just end up taking the, the losses. And this is the, the, the the death of the farmer is not a physical death, but a financial death. Why are farmers keep feeding us every single day? We kill them also every single day, slowly, because the food that farmers send to the supermarket, the price are lowered on purpose. Every day, not on Monday, not on Tuesday, not on Sunday, every single day. So they lower the price. So when the supermarket lower the price, they cannot pay good enough the farmers. 
and they promote the, the, the low price every single day in, in huge, in huge uh, letters in red and also in, in bilingual. So they try to kill the farmers. The, all the way they can, they can do that. Everyone who serves expect to be gratified, but farmers are the one who keep taking the blows, all kind of blows. Well, this is a, a image combined by two objects. And that looks strange to everyone, right? We know that that will not be possible. How come a farm girl can have a fancy car? Why not? So we should ask, why not? Oh, the answer is the resources are not properly distributed. So we say this is not a dream of a farmer, but a dream of the human being. The equality isn't a charity, but a human justice. So we have to be more just for everyone who are in need. Well, this is a picture taken in a coffee farm. The people who also feed, people, uh, feed others in silence from the lab to the farm. Um, coffee farm is quite common in Panama in tropical countries. Uh, this is a picture taken close to where we live. Uh, coffee usually, uh, coffee of high quality, uh, usually grown in an altitude of between 1,400 uh, meters above sea level to some 2,000 meters above sea level. Uh, by the way, in Panama, we produce the best coffee in the world. Uh, it's named Geisha, G-E-I-S-H-A. And we have auction every year. Uh, we're here in this, in this town, Boquete. And people from all, all, all over the world come in, mostly from Asia. Uh, the last auction took place probably three months ago. And usually it come people from Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, Singapore, Taiwan. Uh, some come from South Africa, a couple from North America. Europe are not, are not usual. European are not usual to come for the auction. But the last auction, the Geisha coffee was sold at 1300 US dollars a pound. So that's very, that's very, a very expensive coffee. But when we go to a coffee shop, we pay between two to three dollars, US dollars for a cup of coffee. But many people don't know that those two or three dollars, only 3% of that goes into the pocket of the farmers. So that's another evidence that farmers can hardly have a heavy purse. But all other people who are active in other economic activities and fed by the farmer, they do have the possibility to achieve a heavy purse. Well, I thank you for your sharing. Instead of having wasted your time, and I appreciate again the opportunity provided by Professor Lam to participate in this such a significant program about food. And uh, I'm, I would like to thank uh, jo uh, Joanna for having organized this event in such a, a successful way. Well, once again, thank you very much. Thank you, Magil. Thank you. You're welcome. All of so, you. Are uh, welcome. Before we take any questions, so let's take a group photo together via Zoom. So, could you please turn on your cameras so that we can take a uh, screen capture photos together? Okay. So, since there are quite a number, quite a number of um, audience, so let's take a few photos. So. Joanna, are you ready?
Okay, please look at the camera. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, one more. One, two, three. Smile. Okay, one more. One, two, three. Okay. Okay, okay. Thank so you. Two times finished. <laughs> so now we are going to the Q&A session. So if you, can, you want to talk directly, you can unmute yourself and talk. And if you, your microphone is not good enough, you can type in into the chat box so that I can read it out for you. Okay, so uh, let's start the Q&A session. So, so I, I, yeah, I would like to start with two questions. Can, Number one is you. Miguel, well, what about uh, the automation? When do we see that all the farmer turn into robots? Right, so that's my question number one. So the future, what is really the automation in impacting the, the farming industry? Number two is that this uh, about 3% of the money go into the farmer is very really disturbing, at least to me. And my question is that when and how do we get rid of the middleman? Now with the digital well, there would be a lot of direct selling. So how do you really see that uh, it's panning out? So question number one is the automation. We, we can use less human effort in terms of farming. Number two is they cut away the middleman. So we, we have more direct selling. So that the farmer can reap all the benefit because the farming is so important for human race. Okay, two questions for me. Hey, um, I appreciate you very much for your questions. Um, that is a very important issue because with the technology, farmers are getting more uh, uh, an easier life. But I doubt, I doubt that there will be any uh artificial intelligence ability or appliances that will be capable to replace the farmers but surely they can help um about the the profit issue um that is a long history issue and um what the problem has been that the farmers highly have been able to be united. And then they don't have the power to negotiate. So I think that is, that is something the farmer have to do. And precisely as Dr. Lam uh, explained at the beginning in the introduction moment, that I have, uh, I have separated uh, the, the, uh, the, the, pres the presentation into, into two, two sessions. So this one is concentrated in farming. The, the upcoming one will be more focused on the farming business. And hopefully I can do some more researches to comply, uh, to come up with a better answer for that. But uh, you, are, you are having a very good point that farmers are not doing um, well enough to have a, a, a a stronger force of negotiation in order to protect the profit in such a way, in such a way that um, it, we hardly can find an insurance company to share the risk with the farmers. We can assure the car, we can, we can assure the, the apartment, we can even assure the travel expenses, right? But the farmers hardly can be assured uh, on the harvest. So that's a, a social structure that will take more time in order to get the, the it, it have a, a better balance. Okay, so Miguel, I, I guess there are some um, new initiative to have insurance for the farmers. So it was, a, I heard that uh, some organization actually doing it because the big bank will not do it. <laughs> so anyway, um, I, I see that uh, Diko has a question, right? So Diko is from South Africa. So Diko, are you? 
I'm ready to ask your question. Um, yes, um, thank you very much, Dr. Lam, and um, thank you very much, Michael, for a very um, informative uh, presentation. Um, I just have um, two uh, questions. Um, perhaps before I ask a question, and I, I, I should uh, comment um, on the fact that uh, perhaps it becomes very important to, for farmers to think of ways of uh, cutting out the middlemen in order to protect their profits. But um, it's to uh, this uh, phenomenon um, about reducing or avoiding um, the use of meat, or reducing the um, level of meat consumption. Um, what we have found is that uh, in uh, middle income countries that had not had um, ac well, ready access to meat, um, it becomes a status symbol to be able to afford meat. And so there is always this drive where um, previously low income families um, start, when they get more money, they start spending more money on meat because uh, consuming meat is associated with uh, well, better nutrition, good health, and also um, higher social status because you know if you can eat meat means you have got more money. Um, how how I mean, is there a way of changing the perceptions as a you know as a tool towards um, reducing the meat consumption, um, or are there should we be looking at alternative ways of uh, impact of, um, for example, cattle farming uh, on the environment, for example, in more in-depth research as to what diets or what feeds would uh, lead to less emissions from the cows. Um, I mean, both one is scientific, one is social. Um, are these potentially val val um, valuable or viable approaches towards solving this problem? Uh, because I can imagine that uh, when, for example, countries in sub-Saharan Africa uh, have more money, they will spend that more money on meat because it's, it's seen as um, well, reflecting their financial power. Okay, thank you. Uh, are you ready to answer this question? Yeah, um, very interesting remark uh, and, uh, and, uh, and very true that meat, meat had been treated in a distortion way that people don't deal the meat only as a food, but as a social status. Uh, I've seen in some restaurants that have been promoting the meat consumption, they offer a, a, a fixed price for those people who want to visit those restaurants by offering what what you can, whatever you can eat, right? So it's a matter of mentality of the human being. And we have to change our mindset that consuming meat obviously is helpful for our life, but only in a rational uh, amount and not necessarily as a social status. Because it doesn't mean that when I start to consume more vegetable, I'm going to move myself from one social statue to another. So that's a very, a very, uh, a very mental issue, psychological issue. And what we spoke about in the presentation was a more conscious distribution not only with meat, but with food in general. And then when we consume food, we, we, should, be, we, we should be more conscious that enough is enough, not because I can pay for what I'm going to order, but I should be conscious there are many other people who cannot even, not even for meat, they cannot even have vegetables and no breath at all, right? And then, so that's a matter of human behavior 
to have a better distribution, not only in the financial uh, uh, level, but also in the distribution level of the food and the resources that exist in the world. Okay, so next question, please. Yes, John. John has raised your, your oh, hand. Oh, hi, hi. Well, thank you for the lecture. Um, well, um, my question is, technology has enabled the production of meat in the laboratory in the last few years. How do you see this trend um, as providing um, alleviation uh, to, to the degradation of our environment and you know, to the livelihood of, of the farming community? And whether the, the technology, um, I mean, it's in the lab, obviously those who are able to, to assess the lab, they, they will be, they will be becoming farmers, you know, but farmers in the lab. <laughs> I just wonder how much of an impact will this do to the farming community working on the land? Okay, well, uh, I appreciate your question also. Uh, to begin with, I'm not a lecturer. I'm not an intellectual, I'm just a farmer. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the trend that technology is going to be implemented into the farming industry is unavoidable. And I, I can believe that in the, in, in the, in the immediate uh, term, uh, we can see some effect, positive effect. People are curious to try what those products are, are going to be that come from the lab. So more and more artificial food will be coming up into the market. And that's what the people of the supermarket and the drip and the distribution, they want to do and to have more businesses, right? But we have to wait, I think we have to wait to see on a little bit longer to see what secondary effect or complementary effect that those artificial products may represent to the food industry. But I think all solutions, all solutions can come up with some, so, uh, some, uh, some effect uh, to reduce the, 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 how the, the farmers are not fairly treated. Okay, so, you have a question? Uh, hi. <laughs> hi, Miguel. Thank you for the sharing. It's very interesting. And uh, I, I have been uh, reading a lot of articles about the farming as well. So I have this question. So how do you define a farmer? This is the first question. Do they, uh, any activity they involve part of the farming is considered farmer? That's my first question. My second question is, I think the farms, you said there are 570 million farmers, but uh, farms has big size and small size. And the large size uh, farming, they, they do have me mechanical um, process. They have more investment from the uh, industries. So are they having the same problem without much profit margin comparing to the smallholders? So that's my second question. And my third question is, what can government or organization help in this matter? Um, very interesting remark. I appreciate, I appreciate you to have brought it up. Well, as we said, farmer is a passion. You know, if, you, if one is not passionate with farming, you can never enjoy farming. So farming, as we said, is a kind of marriage. We have to engage ourselves. We have to compromise ourselves. We don't have any, uh, any defined uh, shift. We work 24 hours a day. We, can, we should be available around the clock. So the history of farmer hasn't changed much. Usually people stay 
and have to work in some at some kind of isolated area because the price of the land is more affordable. And that also means that farmer have to uh, take the sacrifices to not uh, not having the access to a lot of facility that people in city have, like what I mentioned, the shopping centers, uh, the medicare, the medicare, the education, uh, a lot of uh, modern life facilities are out of reach of the farmer. Um, most of the farm are small scales in the world, uh, especially in the developing countries. I understand that the average size of the farms in the world is around, is around two acres. That means the size of two soccer fields, right? The small farms like in, in China, that look a little bit more, uh, we use a unit of, 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 of mu. We have, uh, you don't have an acre, we don't have an acre. Uh, mu, mu is, mu is about 60 square meters. Right, that's the unit to measure. So the family who runs one move, two moves of land. So what you can do with that, that's limited space of land that doesn't, that doesn't produce much. So usually uh, small scale farmers, uh, as we say, they do, a, uh, they have a life of survival, but they have to complement their income with other activities. So farming is not only activities. And um, uh, uh, please repeat me that a question that I haven't, haven't, haven't written it down. Oh, yeah, my, my second question was uh, whether the big farmers have uh, more advantage in their profit because they are more mechanicalized and maybe they have more resource to buy the modern technology. That's my second question. My third question is, you know, for the smallholder farms to improve their situation, what the government do? Okay. Yeah. Is it clear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the big farmers, I think the bigger the farmer is, the more possibility they have to make more money because the scale is larger and the expenses may be relatively lower they are more accessible to have access of technology and, uh, and, um, and consultancies. But the farming industry, uh, when people have big farms, there are not too many. I'm afraid that is going to have even another danger that is a kind of monopoly. Um, bringing up this issue, I can, uh, mention, for instance, uh, there are supposed to be farmers, not farmers exactly. They do some farm, but they do, but they, but they, they are not completely farmers. Uh, they actually distributors, or they are franchises. Uh, there are there are very few companies in the world, and we know almost all of them. We can mention the Mont. We can mention Sunkist. We can mention Dol. In Latin America, we have Chiquita, Amigo, right? So all they come up with are different kind of producers, fruits especially. But those fruits are not produced by them. They just franchise to other smaller farmers. And they, and they collect the producers from smaller farmers and they just put the stickers onto every single fruit. Name it apple, name it orange, name it lemon, name it banana. So when we go to the supermarket, we see some bananas that says uh, Chiquita brand from Ecuador, from Panama, from wherever. So they are not really produced by those uh, huge farmers. So they are collecting all the, all the products uh, delivered by the smaller ones and they are the one who, who, uh, uh, who do the big business with the product of, 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 the, of the farmers. So back to the, the previous question, how the farmer can get a, 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 a fairer uh, treatment. And then farmer have to find a way, we have to find a way 
to reinforce our union and to negotiate uh, in some way the, the mutual benefits of both people. So that doesn't mean that we don't want the supermarket and those uh, uh, distributor to have the profit, but that should be more, more, uh, uh, more uh, balanced, more fairly, right? So that's another another issue that we need the cooperation. Governments are are usually having some help, but not uh, not permanent. You know, there's no permanent policy, as Dr. Lam also mentioned. That's there are some organizations that help. Well, organizations can help as long as they have uh, the budget to do that. So that's a duty that should come up, that should be brought up by the farmers and to negotiate with those people that we need to have and get a, try to get a, a more balanced treatment to all people. So that not only people in the in the in the in the city can have a fancy life, but also farmers can do that. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I also wish that that uh, insurance things for the farm will will launch and elaborate because I think farm is very risky, so you can lose totally if so, there's some drastic climate, and if there's low insurance, that will be very dangerous. So but anyway, um, I, I, I want to ask a question, right? So I, I know that you have do the deforestation by growing 200,000 trees. Why are you doing that? So as a farm owner, right? So why you spend time and resources to plant the trees that probably is not for harvesting? Um, well, that's... Uh... Also a very interesting remark, as we could have seen in the presentation, farming is a passion. Farming is just like an engagement, a marriage. So one falls in love with the nature. And then uh, reforestating is also an issue that I have been asking myself once after another that why I, I started involving this some 40 years ago. And one of the answers that I came up with is that most probably I came from Hong Kong and Hong Kong had very little forest. And here in Panama, why we have space enough to start reforestating. So that may be the reason, but the trees, the trees are very intelligent. All the plants are intelligent as a human being. And the trees cannot grow forever. Tree has a, a limited uh, span of life. Usually in the tropical, trees, uh, trees can, should be harvested in a matter of 30 or 35 years. And then you have to lower the density, right? Because when, when we start uh, planting trees, we start with a distance of three meters between one, between one another. And then you have to start thinning and that the density gets lower and lower. Um, having been involved in different kind of farming activities, I think uh, planting trees has been the most satisfactory activities that I've ever had. Okay, so let's see whether there's further questions from the audience. <laughs> Any questions? As, as you said, Professor, Professor Lam, planting trees is like raising kids. You see them grow and you see them healthy. That's a very huge satisfaction. Additionally to that, the tree can help uh, refreshing the air and to improve the environment, the soil, you know, the water, the, the underground water control, the regulation. That there's a different kind of satisfaction to be uh, a timber farmer. 
Don? Hi. Don? Go ahead. Uh, so my question is, um, um, many farmers, I, I don't know what, what the data or st statistics are, are showing, that the use of pesticides, the, the use of chemical-based uh, pesticides, uh, on one hand, we need, we need to have pesticides to control uh, diseases of, of plants uh, for, the, for the farming community. But on the other hand, uh, pesticides are, as we know, you know they, they are posing immense dangers uh, to, to, to human health. Um, what, what is the trend? Uh, has technology enabled more organic uh, pesticides? For example, are farmers being educated or um, are getting more conscious about, about the use of pesticides? Are um, uh, governments or authorities or, or NGOs or providing a hand in, in, in helping farmers to manage this, this very critical problem in a farming community? Well, without any doubt, um, the usage of chemical products uh, is necessary in a way, but without applying chemicals in a proper way, and the proper doses, it turned out to be dangerous for the human health and the environmental uh, stability. Um, I may not, I may not be able to come up with uh, an answer because I'm, I'm just a farmer, I'm not a scientist. Uh, but back to the idea that farmers usually are nature nature lovers. So farmer always try not to, con uh, to pollute the area, the environment. So I think uh, having a balanced formula, uh, doses to apply the chemicals and being conscious about the food safety issue, uh, I think that we can keep on and we keep on needing in need of uh, chemical products. Well, as a supplement uh, come to, uh, uh, to keep on dealing with the farming business. I just wanted to add a comment. This is Joanna again. Actually, organic, organic farming doesn't mean use no pesticide. There are also certain uh, allowed pesticide as long as you let it dissipate or degrade over a period of time. So it's not totally not using any chemical or compound. So I think this is uh, one concept maybe uh, mostly, mostly people may not uh, uh, totally understand how the organic farming is done. So it's, they all think the organic is only by using the organic material because we used to have to quality assurance the organic uh, products. So that's what our finding was. So I think uh, John, <laughs> maybe that will answer your question. Thank you. Thank you for helping out. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Chen. You. Okay, so would there be any further questions? So, John, you have another one? Yeah, I, I thought, um, you know, there are so, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there are farming communities uh, banding together, setting up associations, which I see are. Uh, probably in, in America, in, in many, many uh, developed countries, but probably in the developing countries, the associations um, uh, set up by farmers might be weaker. They can't lobby for a lot of help from the government. Um, uh, but whereas, I mean, in Japan, for example, you know, farmers, as you know, they are well protected by the Japanese government. So on one hand, you see um, highly subsidized, uh, a lot of aid subsidies provided by some countries. And on the other hand, you see uh, the farming community uh, lagging behind. Um, how, do you, how do you propose that the world or the farming community can get together and provide kind of um, number one, uh, 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 an international farming community where they can share uh, on a platform like this, 
uh, and that they, they share the expertise and exchange information about how to better farm their crops and better manage their farm, you know, from not just farming, but, you know, ob obviously like what you have said, uh, how to cut up the middleman, you know, if it's possible to cut up, uh, how to have better profits, a, a better yield and better management and better, uh, 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 and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, it is also a very important issue because um, for sure in developed countries, the structure is more complete and stronger. And you have mentioned a word when you started uh, sharing your, your remark that most of the farmers and in many country, they are subsidized, right? So there's, there are hard, we, hard, we hardly can see a professional have to be subsidized. A, a, a businessman need not to be subsidized, right? And the industrials don't have to be subsidized. And then if the farmers have to be, have to be subsidized because it is, it is obvious that the farming business is not being run financially in the most optimist way. So we need to do something much, uh, something else. And for me, that begins with the education. We have to introduce more uh, uh, academic concepts to the farmers because especially in the developing country, the huge majority of the farmers that include myself, we don't have a formal academic formation to farm. It's a kind of a hobby. It's a kind of passion. So that is very limited, uh, limiting to have a better development for, for farming. So I think that as long as the governments and different organizations can start promoting the global education of farming towards the people instead of help uh, uh, teaching them to work in the finance, uh, financial company, in the banks, in the law firms, I think that's a trend that we have to start moving and, and starting from a young generation. So we have to introduce that concept to young people in order that they can have the concept that farming is not something uh, not being appreciated, not being respected. So I think that's, uh, again, a collective liability of, of all of us to help the farmer in order that all of us can be uh, more equalized. Thank you, Matthew. I guess um, the organization of this uh, agrobiotechnology technology talk series is part of the efforts to help farmers to get in touch of different area of people's different expertise so that they have more idea of how to run a better farm. So thank you for your talk today. And, and you know, we know that uh, Matthew has the second part of his talk probably will be given early next year. So I invited you to come to Hong Kong and meet our students and friends. So if you're going to give your second talk early next year, hopefully you can come uh, and we can meet face to face. And uh, before we end, right? So of course, this is the advertisement time. So our next talk will be in mid-September. Uh, it will be in, uh, on the topic of dietary fibers as a multifunctional food component for human health. It will be given by my colleague, Professor Pete Jung, who is a food scientist. So from the field to the table, the food science, food scientists play an important role to convert the raw material to value added product. And the value included the nutrition, there are many farm products that will provide us with different kinds of dietary fibers, which have nutritional value. So I welcome you to join our next talk in September 17. So if you are interested, please use your cell phone to scan the QR code.
to register. And for those who are already on our email list, you also separately email you an invitation. So I hope that we will meet again in September and continue this series to help all those who are interested in agriculture. Okay, so with that, uh, thank you for coming and let's meet again in September. Thank you, Matthew. Okay, so bye-bye everybody. Bye-bye.